Recently, we started looking at several of the individual primary and secondary characters that appeared in The Last of Us, as we count down the days to the launch of its highly anticipated sequel. Having already looked at cannibalistic creep David and Joel's brother Tommy, this time we'll be turning our attention to someone who has a much larger role to play in the story, and is one of the primary players of the larger narrative in the entire game. We're talking, of course, about Marlene, Queen Firefly. Though Marlene won't be appearing in The Last of Us Part II's immediate story, Story, given that Joel very conclusively shot her dead when we last saw her. There's almost no way whatsoever that her presence and the ripples of her actions still won't be felt throughout the story. Both her and the Fireflies have been intricately linked with the stories of many major characters in The Last of Us, so it's pretty much a given that Marlene will continue to shape the story, at least to some extent, even from beyond the grave. But let's start at the beginning and take a look at the whole story of Marlene, everything we know about her from start to finish. Like many other characters from The Last of Us, little is known about Marlene's life before the Cordyceps outbreak. After it, though, she was at the center of a lot of pivotal events. Her fight against the military's totalitarian rule alongside the Fireflies had been going on for a long time by the time The Last of Us's proper story kicked off. In all that time, the Fireflies, outnumbered as they were, continued to suffer heavy losses at the hands of the military. Though they managed to successfully drive out the military from some places, such as Salt Lake City, where we'll be going in a little bit. By and large, the Firefly's numbers continued to dwindle. For a while, she also worked with Joel's brother Tommy, who had joined the militant group because of his disillusionment with the military, and because he was growing increasingly repulsed with the way his brother chose to approach survival in their new reality. And though Tommy would eventually depart from the Fireflies as well, not seeing eye to eye with them on many of their methods of operation, he and Marlene, who had grown close, left each other on good terms. With Tommy telling her before parting that if she were ever in a tight spot, she could rely on his brother Joel for help. Someone else Marlene was far closer with was a woman named Anna, Ellie's mother. Marlene and Anna had actually known each other and became each other's friends before the outbreak. Anna gave birth to her daughter Ellie a few years after the outbreak, but died the very next day. Before dying, she charged Marlene with looking after Ellie, who promised to do so no matter what, and she kept her promise. For a little while, she looked after Ellie like she were her own for years. But realizing that her activities as the leader of the Fireflies would only put her in danger drove her to another decision. She made the decision to put Ellie in a military boarding school, where she would be safe, and sent her away from the Fireflies. Her next run-in with Ellie was portrayed in the four-issue miniseries called The Last of Us American Dreams. Long story short, Marlene chances upon Ellie and her best friend Riley. Riley tells Marlene that she wants to join the Fireflies, which Marlene, of course, initially turns turns down, for now anyway. Because as we find out in The Last of Us Left Behind, Riley does eventually join up with the Fireflies, with Marlene telling her that she'd been testing her. When Riley asks Marlene if Ellie can join as well, Marlene strictly tells her no, and that she wants Ellie to stay right where she is, safe at the boarding school. She proceeds to not only forbid Riley from seeing Ellie ever again, but also decides to send her away to another Firefly unit in a faraway city to separate her from Riley. Riley's pleas for Marlene to reconsider her decision fall on deaf ears, so she decides the night before leaving to sneak off and meet with Ellie one final time to bid her farewell. And of course we know exactly how that turns out. During their one final nighttime adventure, both Ellie and Riley get bitten, with Riley succumbing to the Cordyceps brain infection. Though that proves to be a heavy loss, especially for Ellie, Marlene somehow finds a silver lining when she discovers that Ellie is immune to the virus. And this is where Joel comes in. Well, almost. It's summer of 2033, and Marlene is scrambling to get Ellie out of Boston. She knows that she needs to get her to her people, where they can run tests on her and figure out if her immunity can help them find a cure or a vaccine for the cordyceps infection. In preparation for escorting Ellie out of the city safely, Marlene makes a deal with the local arms dealer Robert, agreeing to buy weapons for the journey from him. After closing the deal with a squad of fireflies by her side, she's attacked by the military. The attack is brutal cutting down the entire squad and even injuring Marlene, who takes a bullet in her side. She somehow manages to escape, though, but when she finally gets to Robert, she finds out that she's just a handful of seconds too late. Joel and Tess are at the scene, having killed Robert moments ago. As it turns out, Robert owed the weapons that he'd sold to Marlene to Joel and Tess. Marlene tells them about the weapons. When Tess demands them back, Marlene tells her that she paid for them, and if they want their weapons back, they're gonna have to either pay for them or earn them back. 
which is when she strikes a deal with them. She tells them that if they deliver some cargo to a group of fireflies waiting at the Capitol building, she'll give them twice as many weapons as Robert owed them. That cargo, of course, is Ellie, and the group of fireflies at the Capitol building are waiting to take her to Salt Lake City, where the fireflies have a stronger base of operations and a full medical team in a hospital. Though that, of course, isn't info that Joel and Tess know or care about just yet. Tess goes with Marlene to check the weapons, and after being satisfied with what she sees, she, Joel, and Ellie set out. Their journey is quite an eventful one, and one that involves a lot of death, heartbreak, and trauma. But here and now, we're focusing on Marlene. Tess never makes it out of Boston, while Joel and Ellie don't see Marlene until the spring of next year in Salt Lake City after a grueling journey. But Marlene's journey from summer to spring isn't an easy one either. As soon as Marlene recovers from her injuries, she and the rest of the Fireflies move out, leaving Boston and heading for Salt Lake City. There are some casualties along the way, with an attack from a pack of the infected killing two of their group. By March 2034, though, they manage to make it to Salt Lake City. Their joy at arriving at their destination is short-lived. Marlene is quickly told that the group of Fireflies that had been waiting for Joel, Tess, and Ellie at the Capitol building in Boston had been killed, and that they have no information of where Ellie or Joel are, or if they're even alive. Marlene takes this news hard, predictably enough, and begins to question her own worth as a leader. Soon, however, her scouts tell her that an older man and a younger girl have been spotted in the outskirts of the city. Joel and Ellie finally arriving after a long and traumatic journey across the country. Joel is knocked unconscious by a firefly and both of them are taken in, with Ellie being taken away for examinations immediately. Marlene's joy at seeing Ellie safe is short-lived too, though. After running their tests, her doctors tell her that though they can reverse engineer a vaccine from the unique mutation of the cordyceps within Ellie, to do so, they'll have to extract that mutation, which would mean killing her. They request Marlene's permission to proceed with the operation. Marlene is immediately torn between her responsibility as the leader of the Fireflies and what a vaccine could mean for the world, and her promise to Anna to keep Ellie safe. But she sees that the choice isn't really hers to make. She figures the operation would go through anyway, given everything that's at stake, and so she tells the doctors to proceed with the procedure. What follows is a conversation with Joel, in which she tells him about the procedure and about what's going to happen. Joel is, of course, immediately and vehemently opposed to the idea, but Marlene tells him that she understands how he feels, that both of them have become sort of surrogate parents to Ellie, and this is an impossible choice for both of them. But Marlene thinks that there are far greater and more important things at stake, and this is the choice that has to be made. Though Marlene has been advised by other Fireflies to kill Joel, she refuses to do so. Instead, she tells one of her soldiers to escort him out of the building, and to shoot and kill him only if he tries to stop Ellie's operation. But of course, Joel manages to overpower the Firefly on his way out, taking his weapons and proceeding to go on a rampage throughout the hospital. Joel cuts through a large number of Firefly soldiers, eventually making his way to the operation room. He picks up Ellie and fights his way out of the building. In the parking lot beneath the building, though, he's stopped by Marlene. She holds Joel at gunpoint, who's pointing a gun right back at her, while also holding an unconscious Ellie in his arms. Marlene tries to talk with Joel, telling him that Ellie's odds of survival in a world full of bandits and the infected, or anyone's for that matter, are very low at any rate. She tells him that this is what Ellie would want, and that she would want the surgery to go through. And finally lowering her gun, she tells him that he can still do the right thing. But Joel sees right and wrong very differently. He shoots Marlene in the side, who crumbles to the ground. Joel places Ellie in a car, and then comes back to Marlene, who's bleeding out on the ground. She asks him to let her live, but Joel, saying that she would only come after Ellie if he let her go, shoots her point blank in the head and kills her. And that is obviously the last we see of Marlene. Later, Joel spins a fiction and tells Ellie that the Fireflies had found several who were immune to the virus like Ellie was, and that their experiments had led to nothing, and that they had as such even stopped looking for a cure. Whether or not Ellie believes that lie is something we'll find out in The Last of Us Part 2. She probably doesn't. So yeah, Marlene is irreversibly dead, and her chances of coming back are next to none. But that doesn't mean she couldn't make appearances, perhaps in flashbacks. And even if she doesn't, given how much of an impact she's had on so many characters, from Joel to Ellie to even Tommy, and given how the first game ends, with all that Joel does with Marlene and the Fireflies and the lie he tells Ellie, it's guaranteed that the impact of Marlene's presence will continue to be felt for some time to come. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, please hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to switch on the notifications bell icon next to it. That way, 
you'll never miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching.